You know, Jesus, when he came to this earth 2,000 years ago, came with an urgent message, an unpopular message. You know, it weren't popular then, and it ain't popular now. And it's this. Jesus said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Why do you need to repent? You know, because God's judgment is coming. You know, the Bible says that God commands men everywhere to repent because he's fixed a day in which he would judge this world. It, what? Um, how you doing? You all right? Uh, yeah. What does that mean? Peace be upon you. Okay. But, you know, the Bible says there's only one way you can have peace, and that's with God. Through Jesus Christ, the sinless substitute who came into the world to save sinners, to give his life. Because, you know, we're, we're all guilty, right? We've all broken God's law. And, and God says in his word that there's no peace for the wicked. There's no peace in sin. It's all going to end in death, in torment, in the eternal hellfire. But this is why Jesus Christ came into the world to, to die on a cross, to give his life as a ransom for many, you know? John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Why, why did God have to give his Son, you know? Well, Jesus is God. God became a man, lived a perfect life, died the perfect death, humbled himself to death on a cross. Because you know what? God says in his word that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This holy and righteous God, he, re he requires a sacrifice. Atonement has to be made for sin. And we can't, we can't atone. You can't atone for your own sin. We're all guilty. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. That's the end result of all your sin. You can't pay for your own sin. God's moral law is screaming for your death. But this is why Jesus Christ came into the world to, to become the sinless substitute, to take the sin of the world upon himself. You know, the Bible says that everyone who hangs on a tree is cursed. And Jesus Christ became that cursed man on the tree when he, when he hung there, when he suffered, when he bore the wrath of God upon himself. You know, the, the, the scripture says that the one who knew no sin became sin in order that we might become the righteousness of God. The one who, the one who never sinned, he was without sin, he was sinless, stepped into his own creation. Because you know what? Now, the Bible clearly teaches us that the, the first man, Adam, sinned. And because of his sin, we were all made sinners. We're all sinners by nature, you know? I don't have to teach you to lie or steal. You know how to do it, right? If you choose to do it and go down that path, right? It's inherent. Sin is inherent within us. You know, we, we come out of the womb sinning, you know? You don't have to teach a child to sin. But the, that because of... Um, but the Bible says that in the same way that, that that first man sinned, because of his sin, we were all made sinners. You know, it's, it also says that because of one man's obedience, the many were, were made righteous. And that one man is Jesus Christ. You know, the scripture says at the right time, while we were still weak, still sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. You know, why did Christ have to die for the ungodly? Does anyone know? Say that again. That's right, you know, on the night of his betrayal in the upper room, Jesus said this to his disciples when he was about to suffer and die on the cross. He said, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. That's why Jesus Christ died on the cross. That's why God gave his only son in order that many might be forgiven. You might be forgiven of your sins. You know, I, I, I've been forgiven of my sins. I, I'm not standing out here because I'm looking down upon you. You know, I was a sinner like everyone else. But I'm saved by God's grace. And I pray that might be you as well. Are you, are you saved by God's grace? Are you trusted in Jesus? Praise God. You know, keep trusted in him. What about you? Are you trusted in Christ? Praise God. Are you born again? You know? Because Je Jesus said, Jesus says in the scripture. Hello. Can ask you some questions? Yes. So do you think Jesus is born? That's what Jesus himself said, yeah. The, the scripture is crystal clear. You know, John 1 says... In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Because you know what the truth is? Only, only God himself, you know, could pay the debt of sin, could pay the fine. Yes, go on. Yes. Uh, London, London Street Preacher. London Street Preacher. Huh? All right. What's the... <laughs> Bank. <laughs> you know, the truth is, right? Only God himself could pay the debt of sin. Because we can't pay the debt. We're all guilty. The law's screaming for our death. You know? Imagine a judge who let a murder. Imagine someone comes and murders your family. 
and in the courtroom, the, the, the judge just lets him off the hook. Take care, yeah? The judge just lets him off the hook. He wouldn't be a good judge, would he? You'd think he was a corrupt judge. But when people say, you know, oh, God is merciful, he'll, he'll just let me off, you know, without any payment, without any ransom. That's, a, that's, that's the same thing. But, it, but, but if someone, an innocent one, who's without sin, steps in and says, I'm going to take the punishment for them, I'm going to pay the price, in order that they, they might be forgiven, that they might be transformed, you know? And, and that's why Jesus Christ came into the world. That's, that's why he laid down his life, because we, we can't pay the fine, you know? We're all guilty. The wages, the wages of sin is death. Hello. But this is why Jesus Christ became a man, became flesh, humbled himself, emptied himself, in order to pay the debt of sin and rise again three days later, so that all those who believe in him, trust in him, who repent, might be forgiven you know it's not a lot this is not a license to sin it doesn't mean you know you can just carry on sinning because some some people use that argument against christians no when when someone's when someone truly believes in the gospel when someone truly repents they're transformed they're transformed from darkness to light that's the evidence they're no longer living for themselves living for sin you know when, when someone's truly born again as yeah that's right that's right you know, the verse, John 3, 3 says, unless a, man, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When someone truly repents and believes in Jesus Christ and their faith is in him, you know, not, not in the church or in their family, but in Jesus Christ and in him alone. That's the evidence that they have been born again. That God has given them a new heart. That he's transformed them from darkness to light. The person who, who claims to be a Christian, you know, but, you know, sorry? Sorry? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a YouTube, I have a YouTube channel, yeah. London Street Preacher. Yes. Yes. Do you, do you have questions? Yeah, do you have a question? Um, yeah, I do. Yes. What do you think about the Lord, right? Huh? What do you think about the Lord and God? What do I think about what? God. Can I say something? Well, that's, that's what I'm preaching. I'm, 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 this is why I'm standing here to... Yes, go on. How do you think I can change and be better? <laughs> Well, only God can change her. Well, only the blood of Jesus can wash away your sin. You can't wash away your own sin. That's the downfall of every religion of this world. You know, it's man's attempt to build his own, own stairway to heaven. You know, if you try hard enough to be a good person, that somehow your good deeds will outweigh your bad deeds. But God says no one is good enough. No one is righteous. You know, every religion of this world is man's attempt to, to build his own stairway to heaven. But biblical Christianity is, um, you know, God coming down from heaven and lifting man up to heaven. And that's what, that's what God did when, when Jesus Christ became flesh and stepped into his own creation. He's always existed, you know. For those who want to say that he was just a prophet or, a, or the Archangel Michael or the Jehovah Witnesses teach or a good teacher. No, the, the scripture is crystal clear. Jesus was very clear about who he was. Where, when the Jews were persecuting Jesus in John chapter 8, he said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. They said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and you've seen Abraham. And Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. It says that they picked up stones to throw at him. You know, why, why did they pick up stones to throw at him? Because he was claiming deity. I am. When he said before Abraham was, I am. You know, that is the Old Testament name of God. When, when, God, when God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, and he sent them to the, the children of Israel as, as a messenger. He said to them, tell them that I am has sent you. That, 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 that word I am is the, is the Hebrew name for Yah Yahweh. The, the, the Hebrew name for God, Yahweh. You heard of that before? Yeah, Yahweh. Right? Some Jews won't even speak it because they're so scared of speaking it. But it's okay as long as you're you know, speaking it with reverence and all because you're worshipping God. But... Um, so when Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am, he was saying, I am Yahweh. He was claiming deity. You know, in John chapter 10, um, Jesus said to the Jews again, he said, before, he said I, I and my father are one. He says, all that the father gives me, all those who would believe in him, will come to me and, I, and, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. He says, my father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of his hand. He said, I and the Father are one. Again, the same thing. The Jews picked up stones to throw at him. 
could, and he said many good works I've done for my father you know for which for which one are you going to stone me and they and they said to him you know not for a good work are we going to stone you but you a mere man make yourself out to be God so again you know to claim oneness with a father right is to claim likeness and oneness with you know with, with him you are one and the same no, so for those who want to say, you know, Jesus didn't say he was God, he did. It's, it's clear. You know, read John chapter 10, you know, John chapter 8, John chapter... Do you read your Bible? You know, John chapter 1. Very clear. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So you can say with confidence from the Scripture that Jesus Christ is God. And only God himself can pay the debt of sin. And that, that's how God has demonstrated his love. That's what God did 2,000 years ago, when the second person in the Trinity... Jesus Christ became flesh, laid down his life, bore the wrath of God, bore the sin of the world upon himself, took the punishment that sinners like you and I rightly deserve. And if he'd never done that, there would be no forgiveness, there would be no salvation, there would be no free gift of eternal life. We'd all be going to hell, all of us, including myself, you know, and receive the wages of sin, which is death. But this is the good news. The free gift of God is eternal life. Christ Jesus came to save sinners. Does that make sense, yeah? All right. You got any more questions? All right. Take care. Yeah. I'll let you get off. You're gonna squirt me with that, are you? <laughs> There's no other way that you can be safe, folks. Penance ain't gonna save ya. Praying five times a day ain't gonna save ya. Fasting, Ramadan, making confession to a Roman Catholic priest won't save ya. Only the sacrificial death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, can save you and will save you from your sins. I don't know when death is going to come. Yes. Are there such things as unforgiven sins? Jesus says, there's one sin that won't be forgiven, and that's the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Every sin that people commit will be forgiven. Because, so I try not to help you understand this. Have you, have, have you read the Bible? Right, so you know when you've heard, you've heard about this, right? When Jesus talks about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, that's when someone utterly rejects the work of God and completely denies it, because it's like they've 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 hardened their heart to destruction. There's no turning back for them. You know, the the, the religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees in in the Bible, they they said that Jesus cast out demons by Satan. They attributed the work of God to the devil. And by that, they were completely denying the work, the work of God. They were completely... They, they'd reached the point of no return. Does that make sense? Does that, does that help you understand? But every, every sin that people commit will be forgiven. You know? Murder, lying, stealing, all these, these evil things that people do. Witchcraft, idolatry. You know, what is idolatry? Does anyone know? What is it? That's right, worshipping idols. That's true, that's true, right? Because, you know what the truth is, right? We were born to worship, we were created to worship God. Because, but because men, because of sin, our, sin has separated us from God, right? Men will make an idol of anything, you know? This thing here is an idol. You see people, they like this all the time, right? On their phones. It becomes a God. There's nothing wrong with having a phone, right? But... This thing can become a, an object of worship, you know? People worship sport, don't they? Football. Nothing wrong with football in, it, in of itself. But when it becomes a god, and, you know, the Bible says that men will make a god of anything. Though, you know, the Bible talks about this in, in, in the scripture, that, that men know that God exists, but they, they, they sorry? Okay, all right, yeah. Men, men know that God exists, but they push the truth of God away from them. And they, 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 they make up idols to suit their own sinful desires, you know? Gods that don't talk, they don't breathe, you know? God, no false gods that are okay with the evil things that they like to do, you know? You, you see this all over the world, you know, in, in you know, pagan religions and pagan deities, they worship false gods. And, you know, God, gods that aren't holy, that don't demand perfection, that don't call you to repentance. But the true God of Scripture call, commands us to repent and turn from our sin. And there's a book, the verse in scripture that says that God commands men everywhere to repent because he's fixed a day in which he would judge this world in righteousness. That's why you need to repent. Do you know what repentance means? Yeah, it kind of, yeah. Ultimately, it means to have a change of mind. 
a change of heart. That's what it means to, to no longer conceal your sins, but confess them to God and forsake them. You kind of touched on it a bit there. That's what biblical repentance looks like. And not only that, not to, to leave you there, but to believe in the gospel. You know, Jesus says, repent and believe in the gospel. That's a command from God to all of us, right? And to believe in the gospel is to believe in the good news of salvation. That for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's the gospel right there. Come on, you got a question? Uh, so like, I've seen Christians. Yeah. Yes. But they're not Christians. Yeah. They're not Christians. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Anyone who claims to be a Christian, but they carry on sinning, lying, stealing, committing adultery, you know? LGBTQ+, you know, being homosexual. Anyone who, any, anyone who claims to be a Christian but carries on doing them things, they're not a Christian, you can be sure of it. Because the, the, the Bible's crystal clear that everyone who is born of God doesn't make a practice of sinning because they've been born of God. The Word of God has transformed them. They can't stay in sin. That doesn't mean that you don't sin. I, I, I sin every day, but I'm no longer a slave of sin. I'm a slave of God, a slave of righteousness. You know, you're either a slave one way or another. Either you're a slave of sin or you're a slave of God. Being a slave of God is where true freedom is found. Because you know what Jesus says? You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. What do you need to be set free from? That's right. Do you know what Jesus says? Everyone who practices sin is a slave of sin. That's what you need to be set free from. And um, so for those who claim to be Christian, but they carry on living just like the world, living like the devil. You can be sure of it, they're not a Christian. You know, based on, not based on my own opinion, but based on what the Bible says. And you sound like you know it enough. You, you, you already, you have a grasp it. So I would, I would urge you to keep reading the scripture, you know. Keep trusting in Christ, all right? All right, do you have any more questions? Okay, you take care, yeah? Take care. Thank you, sir. Take care.